third focus point that I'd like to cover with you today is it's kind of a neat discovery that came about about four years ago. I live in Kona and Natalie Coughlin, Olympic gold medalist, was swimming in my pool. And I was noticing something very interesting about what she was swimming, but she was swimming with an open hand. The next time I got into my endless pool at home, I started playing around with that open hand theory. And what I found is that when Natalie and other top athletes open their hand and keep it relaxed, what that does is it allows you to focus on your lower palm and your wrist for power. And when you focus on that lower palm and wrist for power, you engage your large muscle groups. And I in turn uh, labeled that the power of the Y. So to demonstrate, I want to show you how the muscles look when you engage the power. Most people have been taught to apply power with a hard hand. So I'm going to bring Tim in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit there and demonstrate. So I'm going to start out by pressing hard in my pull, starting from that really nice high elbow catch position. And I'm going to start pressing down on his, on his palm. And when I do that, I notice tension in my shoulder and my forearm is fully engaged. Now I'm going to shift the power or the fulcrum to right underneath my wrist. And I'm actually going to let my hand go limp. And when I do that, I fire my lats. So I'll go back to the finger hand, pressing down. I'm using my shoulder and my forearm for power. And when I go over to the my wrist, what I'm doing is I'm engaging these large muscle groups, the lats, all along the side of the body to engage my power. So what's really cool about this is, first of all, when your hand is slightly open and relaxed, you're creating less tension. And by creating less tension in your hand, you're going to be saving energy to apply into your wrist and to engage the power. So what we're going to do is we're going to have Tim get on the ergometer and play with this just a little bit. Something that's kind of neat is what is on this ergometer are the new power paddles. And they've been cut down to add increased awareness to the wrist portion of the stroke. So Tim's going to start paddling here. Really keeping a nice high elbow, like we've talked about before, but really focusing on not just the power in the hand, but power specifically in the lower palm and the wrist. Focusing on the power of the Y. And what this is doing is this is really giving them an optimum power in each pull by connecting with that wrist. Most people will call this your sweet spot in a lot of other sports. So this is the sweet spot, this power Y. Now what happens when Tim decides to break the wrist just a little bit? What's going to happen is he's going to start letting water A, slip by his hand, and B, he's not getting nearly the kind of power that he was doing when he goes back to that nice firmer wrist. And he does this, what I can see is the watts start going immediately down. Now back to a firm wrist, but a relaxed hand. And you can see that there's going to be more power available. So one of the most critical components to an effective arm pull is being aware of that this wrist area right here, this fulcrum in your wrist, is where when you press and apply power correctly to this area, you're going to fire your large muscle groups, and you're going to get a lot of power, a lot of bang for your buck out of each and every pull. If you shift it forward into a hard hand, you're going to be using your forearm and your expendable shoulder muscles as opposed to the large lats.